I like to drink kombucha. I get tired of drinking water and I have finally found a healthy alternative. So what you are looking at is my jar of kombucha which has been fermenting about 10 days. You want to make it and let it sit for about 7 to 10 days and it is covered up with just a dish rag. Cheesecloth's a little thin in case um, gnats or something wanted to get into it. Throw a dish towel and it lets it breathe and then it is kept safe too. So I have a special dish rag that I only use for my kombucha. And I'm gonna take it off so you can see what it looks like inside. Inside, this is it. And yes, it looks kind of disgusting. The thing floating on top is a SCOBY. It floats on top of your kombucha mixture and if you smell it, it will smell a little vinegary. And After I drink a kombucha bottle, I rinse it out with hot water and put it in the drying rack. I don't like to use soap just in case I were to get soap in it. Don't want it to kill my kombucha or anything or taste gross. I put them in the dishwasher to kill germs. I put them on a rinse only, a hot rinse and a heated dry so that they are ready and extra clean for my kombucha. So now we are ready to take out our SCOBY and you don't want to touch it with metal because that can kill the scope. We grab it with our fingers. I just thoroughly wash my hands, let it drip off a little bit, and I'm just going to put it here in a plate that again is clean to keep it nice and clean while I am uh, bottling this and getting the new batch ready. Making kombucha is really easy, but it can be messy if you're not careful. Notice we're using an old table. We do have three small kids, so it looks pretty rough, but we are going to pour this in here. So this again is probably the hardest part. Now it's not all going to fit, but most of it will, but you want to reserve a cup of your uh, pure kombucha mixture anyway to start your next batch. So here we go. Hopefully I will not make a huge, huge mess. There we go. And I fill it about up to the pour line. This is about a gallon and a half, so that doesn't, I have way more than a cup. So after we get down a little ways, filling our bottles, then we will add some more of this. You can use your juicer to just juice any kind of fruit that you would like in it, or you can put a handful of fruit in with just a little bit of water and boil it on the stove and mash it up to make juice, which then you would need to strain it out. This is a super easy way, and right now fresh fruit is really expensive. So I get only 100% juice because I want it to be healthy and not have too much sugar, and I really like flavor. So I put a heaping spoonful. The good thing is that it will eat a lot of the sugar as it's finishing the fermenting process in the bottles. So you're not getting a whole lot of extra sugar. Then I'm just gonna take it and mix it up. And again, if you don't have one of these pitchers, you don't wanna stir it with metal because the metal is not good for your kombucha, but you could use a wooden or a plastic spoon to stir your flavoring in. And if you're not a flavoring person like I am, the pure stuff tastes pretty good. And on the top, before we bottle the kombucha, I go ahead and stick this stuff in here too. It should be clean, but just again to make extra, extra sure. I have my pitcher, which I'm going to pour my kombucha into, and that's where I mix my flavoring. So this is a Pampered Chef pitcher, but you can use whatever. And I also have my hose. You can bottle your kombucha using a little cheesecloth to filter it and a funnel, but my husband uh, used to make beer, so he has showed us the way that he likes to do it. And it's a little more exact and a little less messy. So we use this hose, which is really cheap to buy. And this is the bottling wand. These are the bottles that we use for bottling kombucha. It's a, uh, a beer cider type bottle that you'll find uh, in stores, you can save them from if someone uses um, or alcohol drinks Grolsch beer, these are known as Grolsch bottles because that brand 
uses this type of bottle with a reusable stopper that you can see here. We bleach them, wash them in the dishwasher at high temperature. And these seals are reusable for, you know, probably around 15 times. The rubber seal can be replaced. The plug's actually ceramic, so it's good over and over again. Uh, you can get these from Northern Brewer or one of many other homebrew supplies that you might have in your hometown or um, online that you might find. They're very readily available. They're not too expensive. And best of all, you can use them over and over again. We never drink these directly from the bottle because the the you'll develop a small SCOBY in each bottle from the, the carbonation process, the, the other fermentation that goes on from the flavoring or whatever residual sugars left there. And it also, we feel like helps them to stay cleaner. So open the bottle, pour your kombucha into a cup. If you want to skim the little mini SCOBY off and throw it away, that's fine. And these bottles should last you for a good long time. We keep about two cases of these bottles. That way it takes about a week to 10 days to make a batch. So we can be drinking off one of the cases. And then when the, when the other case is ready, we have a case that is clean and untouched and ready to use to bottle the new, the new batch. Scoby is the word that means symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So there's two fermentations that actually take place. The yeast will convert the sugar <clears throat> in your tea mixture to alcohol, but there's also the bacteria which will convert the alcohol to a more acetic acid or vinegar. So most of the alcohol in this is gone. There's less than a, you know, a fraction of a percent of the alcohol because the bacteria eats up the alcohol and that's actually where the vinegary taste comes from. So this is our bottling wand. It's spring, it has a valve here in the bottom. You just touch it to the bottom of the bottle and the siphon will flow and you lift it up off the bottom and it cuts off. It comes apart entirely for easy cleaning. You can see down in there, there's just a spring and plunger. This goes on your bottling wand. This whole thing costs about $1.50. Once again, from a, a wine making or homebrew supply shop, or there's these, those places are even starting to sell this stuff for kombucha. Hose, get it to the same place. It's about 40 cents a foot. We bought too little the first time. So this is our new one. There's five feet or six feet here now. It's always better to have a little more than not have enough. Take it from me, we learned the hard way. So this is our highly technical setup that we have here to bottle our kombucha. I have a quilt in the floor just for padding because I am actually gonna be um, laying down in the floor getting eye level with the bottles so that I can see that everything is going smoothly, that the kombucha is flowing this jar right here is where we're going to start. We have filled the tube with water to get it going. And we will put it into this uh, mason jar cup right here just to get it going. Water will come out first. And then when we see kombucha, we know we're ready to insert it into a bottle. And you will see I have a light right here so that it is shining in these dark bottles. Sometimes it's hard to see. And the light helps me know when I'm getting close to the top so that I need to stop. Oh, the towel also, I should mention that. The towel is because I happen to be messy by nature and the, I don't want kombucha all over the floor. Kombucha. So Tara is gonna be filling the first bottle Sometimes people ask, how full should I fill the bottle? We go pretty close to the top because the space the bottling wand takes up will leave a real good head space in the bottle and you'll need a little head space to make sure the bottles don't overpressurize. And you'll notice it goes pretty quick. It's a gravity bottling system that um, people have used around the world for, for many, many, many years now. Um, like we mentioned before, the valve in the bottling wand will cut off the flow just when you lift it off the bottom of the bottle. So you don't have to worry about it flowing. It seems to be pretty efficient. So you can see what this looks like now from floor level. You can see into this bottle that I went to right about here. So I'm going to move this one out of the way just a little bit so that you can see into the next bottle. A little bit better. I've already started filling it. Here we go. Arm out of the way. 
And so it's gonna come right up to the top with the bottling wand and then I move. So that's about how much head space I have left. So this is the very last bottle that we filled. You see, we didn't have enough to make it all the way to the top, but that's okay. You can have a partially filled bottle at the end. It's just gonna end up not being quite as carbonated, uh, but it will still be delicious. So we mentioned we use these bottles for simplicity and for recycling use. To close the cap, you don't need a crimper, you don't need a press or anything. It's simply about just putting the plunger on the top and pulling the bale down on the side and it's sealed and ready to go into storage for a few days before you can enjoy your nice carbonated kombucha drink. For our kombucha, while it's carbonating in the case boxes that we purchased the bottles in, the other is there is a small probability that you could have an exploding bottle or as we call them in the business, bottle bombs from something getting over carbonated. And the box, if it's closed up and everything's in there, it will minimize the mess. Knock on wood, but we are yet to have a bottle bomb in our history of making kombucha. But hey, there's a first time for everything. We just want to be ready. If you are worried that your kombucha is going to explode or you aren't going to be able to drink it for a while, then you can always put it in your refrigerator and that will slow down the carbonating process. So my SCOBY has only been sitting out during the bottling process that took maybe 10 minutes or so, give or take just a little bit. And I don't want my SCOBY to dry out too much. It probably wouldn't if I was it was out a few minutes longer, but I like to go ahead and put it back into the rest of the kombucha in the bottle to make sure that it doesn't dry out too much. So some people add this and make sure it goes to the top. Usually when I'm adding my new mixture, I just put it right on the on top of the SCOBY and it usually ends up floating to the top. So to do that, simply grab your SCOBY and place it right back on top. I try to make sure it's kind of not too folded on itself. If it's a little bit folded over, not too big of a deal. So usually after we have bottled, I go ahead and start a new batch. So this is what I like to use. It doesn't have to be this brand, but this water came from Whole Foods just because that happened to be where we were when we needed the water. So this is spring water and we like to use spring water when we can get it because it is good and healthy for the probiotics in the kombucha. This is Trader Joe's black tea just because black tea after we our research Turns out that black tea tends to work best for kombucha. Some people do use green tea, but black tea is what we have always used and liked. And I do get um, organic when I can because the SCOBY obviously grows and it can be reused. And I, you reserve a cup of the kombucha to start the next batch and I don't want anything necessarily bad or not good for me to be in there to start the next batch and then just to keep going. That is basically all you need for basic kombucha. So you can see that for what this stuff costs and again this is 80 tea bags and I'm going to use eight per batch. So for what one gallon and a half, which is what I make at a time, costs, um, I get 11 usually bottles of kombucha. And that's cheaper than what one bottle of kombucha costs me at the store, even when I buy Kroger brand. I just poured in this whole gallon of spring water into a ceramic line cast iron pot, but any pot will do as long as it's big enough to hold it. So I am going to wait until this boils and then I will pour in my sugar. Uh, please ignore that my pot looks a little gross just because it's the white ceramic line cast iron and I use it for making the tea a lot. So 
looks a little tea discolored in there. Now you can see that our water is coming to a boil. There are little bubbles coming up in it. So I am going to add my cup and a half of sugar to the boiling water. Now that might seem like a lot of sugar, but you're going to stir it till it dissolves and the sugar is eventually going to get eaten by the yeast in the SCOBY. So once your product is finished, there's actually very little sugar left. So it is a great alternative for people like me that like sugary drinks. You get tired of drinking water, but you need something and you want something healthy. So that is one reason that I love kombucha. So I have stirred it pretty much. Now, the kind of sugar this is, it is does have a slightly golden hue to it, so that's why mine looks a little golden in color. But I'm gonna go ahead and then turn it off. And next, I need to drop in my eight black tea bags. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. I like to push them around just a little bit, let the tea start seeping out of them. And I'm going to steep this. Just let it sit here and steep for about seven minutes. Seven minutes on my timer. If you go over a little bit, that's okay. time to take out our tea bags. So I am just going to fish these right out with my wooden spoon and throw them straight into the garbage can. The recipe that we originally started out with and have tweaked to make our own says to go ahead at this point and add another half gallon of water so that it will help it to cool because you don't want to put it into your kombucha pot if it is hot because it will kill the scoby so you have to let it cool i usually go ahead and stick it in the refrigerator to speed up the process because i tend to make it late at night and i don't want to be up all night waiting for it uh, some people let it sit overnight and then add it in the morning but i like to go ahead and get it going good before i go to bed so i'm getting ready to stick this into the refrigerator because as you see the other half gallon of water that they want me to add is just not going to fit so the kombucha tea is now cooled and it's ready to be added to your fermentation vessel. So we're going to dump it in. You got to make sure it's cooled off real good or else it'll kill your SCOBY. So we add that to the vessel. And then we're going to add about a half gallon of water to make one, one half gallons of kombucha. So now all we have to do is put our towel over our SCOBY. Some people like to secure it with a rubber band. We just leave it alone and don't touch it. If the um, SCOBY is bothering you not being perfectly straight, you can fix it. I try to touch it as little as possible. And now you're just going to wait a week to 10 days. The longer you wait, the less sugar is in it and slightly more vinegar taste is going to come out but it is kind of an acquired taste that you will probably learn to love so here is my kombucha several days later after it has had time to ferment you see it's got this nice foam to it i'm gonna pour a little bit for my assistant come over to the table assistant here you go and let's see how she likes it. 
What do you think? Good. good. Ah, now that's good stuff.